Thank you, Victor. Um, Micropass laser has become one of our um, standard treatments um, in our hospital, and I would like to introduce you um, to the principle of this uh, therapy. Okay. So let's first have a look um, to understand the principle. Let's first have a look at, um, at conventional photocoagulation. What happens? So there you have got the laser beam on, and some of the energy is then transferred into heat, and the longer the the laser uh, beam is on, the more heat is generated and can also diffuse into the tissue. So the more basically tissue damage uh, you can get. And this, this, um, this heat basically can coagulate, coagulate uh, the protein. So it's similar to an egg where the egg uh, loses its transparency. Now the, the question how actually laser um, can can uh, work. It's it's not su it's surprisingly that that is not really solved, but there are maybe two uh, or there are two um, explanations for it. First of all, there are you if you really have got a lot of energy applied to um, the tissue, you will create a scar, and uh, the photoreceptors are then replaced by glial cells. For example, they consume less uh, oxygen. And that means, in the end, less uh, edema and less uh, neovascularization. That is one effect. But it has also turned out that uh, there are also secondary biological effects. So you don't necessarily have to create a scar in order to have a, a laser effect. And this is um, what Micropulse uh, um, makes use of. So there you uh, apply the, the laser energy in short pulses, so you have got no, no real heat build up, and no visible, visible burns. And this is how it works. So basically your laser beam is, is, uh, is cut in small pieces. So you put on the laser, and then there is a, a long time, this is the off time here, uh, where the tissue has got uh, enough time actually to, to get rid of all the heat. And so you, you don't build up any, any heat, and you create no scar. You, in, with micropulse, you will also come across one term, and that is the duty cycle. And that's basically the time where the laser is on in a given time, divided by the time where it's off. And usually, for safety reasons, at the moment, we usually apply a, a duty cycle of only 5%. So that means, in a given time, the laser is on for 100 microseconds, and then it's off for 1,900 microseconds. So there's a long time, actually, for, for the tissue to get rid of all the heat. Now the, the problem with this, you get, in our experience, you get nice effects, but you don't see anything. So when you treat, you have the feeling nothing happens. And that is maybe also a psychological thing. You, you, you know, what, does, what you can't see really is, is, uh, maybe doesn't work. So. And, uh, but so overall, the problem is not really to treat too much. The problem is also to treat too, too little. So you have to apply really dense treatment. And, um, and the other thing is you have really to, um, to focus uh, very carefully, because otherwise you will also uh, lose a lot of, of the energy that, that needs to be applied. The yellow laser, again, here has got a, a, an advantage, because you can titrate. You basically, you go to the periphery, and there you apply uh, one burn where you really get to the threshold. So where you actually get a scar. But there's the threshold that, that tells you how, how the patient um, absorbs the energy. And then you go down to 50% of this energy. And then you don't see anything. So titration is important and also focus. Uh, to show, uh, to, to um, show you an example why this, this under-treatment is really critical, this was a publication where a traditional argon laser was compared with a micropulse and high-density micropulse, where the laser spots were really densely applied. And you see that here, the, the best gain in visual acuity was only seen in the high-density micropulse group, whereas if the, the, the micropulse uh, spots were not dense enough, you didn't see any effect at all. And just this is an example that, that I think uh, shows you how much more energy you can apply if you really uh, treat densely so, for example, in this given area, you see that you would apply only if, if you separate the, the spots by one, one laser spot apart, you would apply in a given area, for example, here, 25 spots. But if you 
uh, treat it uh, you know, next to each other, you would apply even uh, you know, three times more energy to this given area. So all in our hands, it's really a, a good uh, therapeutic option, but you have to be careful to focus and be careful not to undertreat. So this is, um, was a short introduction. And now we come to uh, two examples, actually, where we um, apply this. I will um, give you an example on uh, central serous uh, chorioretinopathy, one of the most common uh, macular diseases. And there we use, uh, as a standard treatment, uh, micropulse laser, but also uh, photodynamic therapy. So it is a disease that is all known to you. One can distinguish between more an acute phase um, which, is, which you can see here with uh, all this, this, uh, this fluid accumulation and here usually a, 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 pin, a focal pinpoint leakage. Uh, for example, also seen here, this can be really massively uh, you know, um, elevated here, a lot of leakage. But then there is also a more a chronic uh, form of the disease with a lot of uh, atrophy and, and uh, irreversible vision loss. There is no clear definition uh, to distinguish between these two entities. Um, and, um, but usually we, we treat patients uh, because we see also some, some of these, these long-term changes if there is uh, no resolution of fluid after six weeks. So what are your treatment options for the disease? Well, one way is really, one possibility is to wait because there is, uh, you know, relatively, large number of patients where the, the fluid uh, spontaneously is, is resolved. And you also should think about, just to, uh, to about your possibility to stop steroids if they are given. This is one of the only really um, confirmed risk factors, exogenous uh, steroids. All other things have, there are many things have been tried. Some of them are definitely not working. Um, uh, the, the mineral corticoid receptor antagonist don't work in our hands. I don't know if you've got other experience. I've, I've, uh, for us, for our patients, we've seen no results, but we saw some really serious side effects um, with an increase in uh, uh, potassium levels. Anti-VEGF, for example, I, I think only works if there is a complication, a CNV in these patients, or if actually it's no uh, CSC, but uh, an age-related macular degeneration patient. So in the end, I think there, there are two options at the moment. It, one is PDT and the other one is uh, micropulse laser. And um, what we do, so we, uh, we um, use uh, ICG guided therapy. And here's an example of this. And then we really treat all areas where we see hyperfluorescence. And we, we, we treat all these areas really densely. Usually we wait then six weeks for, um, for results and repeat the treatment uh, if necessary. And if we still have fluid, uh, we would then turn to, to PDT. This was, for example, one series we did. You see the disease duration was really long, four years. And uh, even in these really chronic uh, cases, we saw uh, that uh, around 75% of patients improved overall. 25, 24 were completely dry, but we saw no change in 26 in very chronic cases. And uh, what we also saw that 61% um, of patients that had not responded to a previous PDT treatment uh, showed uh, still an improvement after with micropulse laser. Well, we also saw an, uh, an improvement in visual acuity from 0.36 to 0.3. This is here uh, the uh, survival curves, and you can see uh, in the diagram A on, on your left uh, that the um, the, de the morphological response, so the decrease in, in, um, in central retinal thickness. And you see this, uh, this, this relatively uh, prompt um, response. And on the, on the right, you see the functional response. And you see that this is, there's a kind of uh, time lag. So what we typically see is that the, the retina, the macula dries up, but then there is a time lag between until we see actually a functional recovery. So it takes longer for the visual acuity to recover in these patients usually. We also did another series then uh, where we compared uh, photodynamic therapy with micropulse. These were 100 consecutive patients. We see similar results also in this series with the micropulse. So for example, 80% responded 
36 had a complete resolution of, of uh, fluid. Um, we also saw relatively good results with PDT, I think, uh, given also this, this chronic uh, um, disease status. But there was a statistically significant uh, difference between the uh, micropulse group and the PDT group. So um, the micropulse was, was overall superior to PDT. The similar uh, picture, if you look at uh, visual acuity here, um, so both uh, groups improved, but there was, uh, was, was you know, although we, well, we don't see a much difference, it was slightly maybe a bit different. So this is an example of uh, one patient uh, that was treated. He started with here a lot of um, uh, leakage. Visual acuity was 0.16. And you can see here uh, the areas that we treated, one up here and the other here. Again, here a dense treatment in these two areas. This was here in November. And then he came back in January. Uh, and you can see that in the center, all fluid is gone. There is still some, uh, this, this, this fluid pocket in the periphery. Um, and visual acuity has, has substantially improved. We didn't do anything. We waited because there was no central uh, um, fluid anymore. And then he, there, he came uh, in, in March again. And you see now that the visual acuity even further improved. And now even the, the peripheral fluid is gone. So it, it really takes some time before you see effects. It, you, you can't see anything after you know, only a couple of days. So that has to be kept in mind. So overall, we think that, that uh, the micropulse laser treatment for these patients is, is safe and efficacious. And you can do it even for very long-standing chronic cases. And it, it might be superior to PDT. But at the moment, we also have an ongoing randomized trial with uh, our colleagues. Uh, uh, from from uh, Europe, where we have randomized patients in two groups, uh, micropulse versus PDT, and uh, I think end of this year we will see some results there, which will be um, much more uh, uh, much better, I think. So thank you.